This Marquee Dragon video is sponsored by Shattered Crystal, game codes and items. Hello, I'm Marky Dragon, also known as Marcus Eikenberry in real life. And today I got John Gibson with me, and John is going to show us Red Orchestra. And it's not the original Red Orchestra, it's now version, it's the second version, right? Right, Heroes of Stalingrad, the sequel. So, John, what is your title here at the company? Uh, okay, like, like he said, I'm John Gibson, I'm the president of Tripwire Interactive. President. Yes. So we're talking to the top. The boss man, yes. The boss man. Woohoo! Okay. <laughs> so, can you, for those of who, those who have not seen Red Orchestra before or played it, can you briefly tell me what it is? Sure. So, uh, Red Orchestra is a uh, realistic first person shooter uh, that is set on the Eastern Front of World War II. It focuses on the battles between the Germans and the Russians. Particularly for Heroes of Stalingrad, we're focusing on the actual Battle of Stalingrad. So the whole game takes place during the Battle of Stalingrad. Cool. Um, the Red Orchestra has traditionally been very multiplayer focused. Uh, there is a lot of multiplayer in the, in the new game as well as some single player. Uh, we feature infantry combat as well as some very detailed vehicle combat. Vehicle combat? Now, was that there... means tanks. Tanks? Yes. Sweet. Was there tanks in the first one? There was tanks in the first one, but not like this. Although we're not showing the tanks today, but uh, um, there's a good view of them in the trailer that... Uh, okay. So, and I understand that we're, we're getting a copy of the trailer. Correct. And uh, so what we'll do is, uh, in fact, right now, I'll put up a link right there. And you can click on that, it'll pause this current video, and you can go watch the trailer and then come back to this one. And uh, so, let's, let's see something in the game. Okay, great. I'll fire it up. So I'm going to show you some of the multiplayer gameplay for uh, Heroes of Stalingrad. Um, I'm going to be playing against AI. The first game type I'm going to show you is called Territory. Territory is an expanded version of the game type that was featured in the original Red Orchestra. The, uh, the level that I'm going to show you is a remake of one of the most popular Red Orchestra Ostfront maps. The original map was called Danzig. It's a close quarters infantry combat map. We've now set this uh, in an apartment area around Stalingrad. So I'm going to play the game and show you some of the, okay. some of the cool new features of the game. By the way, I did see the trailer. I saw it outside. Okay. And I loved the body parts blown apart. <laughs> it looks bloody. Yeah, we uh, we don't want to overdo the gore, but we we really do want to have a realistic representation of the brutality of war. So it's I, like, a, I like the bokeh effect where you got the blur. Whenever, uh, whenever you're not focusing on something, it really draws you into what you're supposed to be looking at. So what you see me demonstrating here is the first person cover system. I can walk up into objects in the game, lock onto the cover. I can move along the cover. I can take a quick peek by pressing forward. I can pop up with my iron sights key and fire at enemies. Then I can even blind fire over the top of the cover. That's cool. I can see that being used a lot in multiplayer. <laughs> oh, they're all coming! Now, what different types of characters are there? Is there snipers and infantry and...? Yeah, so, there, so we feature uh, many different classes. Uh, we have an assault class. They get the submachine gun, elite assault. They get access to some special battle rifles, riflemen, elite riflemen, semi-automatic rifles, machine gunner, marksman, squad leader, and commander. So, and marksman, that would be the sniper. 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 Correct. Yeah. That's what I like to play. I like to sit and hide and, well, that's how I usually end up. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, that's uh, definitely, that's my style. So one of the things we like to point out here, you see when the German soldiers are running, you'll notice that they, uh, that they're carrying their weapon in one hand. But if you see the Russian soldiers running, let's see if I can find one. If you see a Russian soldier running, they carry their weapon in two hands. This is actually how the real soldiers were trained to carry their weapons. Oh, okay. So we've added this to the game, not just as a visual aspect, but as a gameplay element. Because if you see a soldier running in the distance carrying a weapon in one hand, you know it's a German. So if you're a Russian, uh, you shoot them. Okay. That's interesting. detail in the graphics were really nice. Yeah. So, obviously, 
obviously the the game is inspired by some events in World War II. Yes. And was there was there anything else that inspired this? I mean, how did Red Orchestra come about? Red Orchestra originally came about uh, when we got our start as a mod team back in uh, 2003. The idea, the idea really was, at the time we felt that no one was making a World War II game, or, well actually nobody was making a shooter that played the way that we wanted it to play. No one was, was really doing the authenticity, the, uh, the level of detail, the realism that, that we wanted in a game that we wanted to play. So we said, hey, let's make a game that plays the way we want it to play. And we got our start as an amateur team doing uh, a mod version of Red Orchestra, a mod for Unreal Tournament 2004. Yeah, actually, I remember seeing news articles about it. Yes. You guys, you guys made some headlines. What's that? You guys made some headlines. We did, particularly because we, uh, we entered Epic's Make Something Unreal contest which uh, was a competition that they held to find the best modders for Unreal Tournament. Uh, we actually won that competition. We won an e two engine licenses for the older version of their engine and the more recent version of the engine that you see here. And we're actually using those engine licenses to make our games now. And that's Sweet. kind of how we got our start. And then we formed a company, started making commercial games. So you really are a player turned developer. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what every that's what every kid dreams of doing. Yeah, I, I like to say we had uh, we did we had a little bit of luck, a lot of hard work, and uh, and being in the right place at the right time. Yeah. So I can actually give commands to my individual fire teams as a squad leader. I'm going to try to get my uh, rifle team up here. Yeah. Oh, I see. To uh, give me some covering fire. Uh, on the Germans across the uh, courtyard. How many how many people can you have in this in multiplayer? 64. 64 and 32 on each team? Correct. Let's see if I can send my assault team over here to uh, clear the area out. We actually, one of the things we, we were doing with the new game that we didn't do with the original game as well is we made the original game to play with a lot of players, but it actually didn't play that well with a few players. So we're actually setting up the new game to scale really well for uh, different player counts. So we actually changed, changed the layout of the level, the paths, the size of the playable area so that 8 on 8 is fun, 16 on 16 is fun, and 32 on 32. And so, uh, did, you, did you just say you're resizing the maps for that? Or is it, you're, or the, the... We changed the playable area so okay. we can actually uh, we can actually block off paths, we can add and remove things from the level, and then we uh, and then we have uh, basically borders, they're minefields essentially that, that restrict the play area okay. for the smaller play sizes. Well, well, that makes sense. Because we really wanted the game to be fun if on a large scale or even on a small scale with some of your buddies. Now I know you, you mentioned that uh, you're going to have tanks in the yes. game, but you weren't going to be showing any. Yes. But can you, can you tell me a scenario of how I would use a tank in the game? Yes. So uh, there, there's two types of uh, tank maps featured in the game. Yeah, I'm going deaf just a little bit here. Sorry. <laughs> it's two, okay. There's two types of tanks featured in the game. Uh, I mean, there's two types of tank scenarios. One is what we call the combined arm scenario, where you might have one or two supporting tanks supporting an infantry. Uh, in those scenarios, usually it's going to be like an urban environment because we want to put the tanks in, an, in their element where they would be vulnerable to infantry. Because if you put them in a wide open field with infantry, the tanks always win. So, uh, and that's a lesson we learned from the first game. We, we, uh, we found that urban environments, the tanks, tanks and infantry fighting together was the most fun because the tanks wouldn't completely destroy the infantry. Uh, the other type of scenario we have is a full-on tank battle. So we have uh, some levels where it's 64 tanks on, oh, uh, on the awesome. step outside of Russia, you know, rolling planes, firing shots at very long range. You know, just really, you're very, uh, very quintessential tank battles. That, so that sounds like my type of game. So, um, is there any character development in this, or is it just you've got your guy, you just choose one of them, and you can't enhance them?